Hi there, everyone. Welcome to The Daily Gardener. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's May 7th. Gardeners love to fall in love with plants. We can fall so hard that we tune out other possibilities for our gardens. Then, in a fascinating twist, our deep dives can suddenly stop, and often they are followed by a pivot. I started out as a shrub gardener, then I made a pivot to annuals and ornamentals and had nary a shrub in my garden. Then I was anti-annual, then I moved into herbs and edibles, now I'm a little bit of everything. Deep dives and pivots, part of the process of growing a gardener. Here's today's brevities. It's the birthday of the Dutch botanist Gerard van Sweeten, born on this day in 1700. As Sweeten turned 40, Empress Maria Theresa inherited the Habsburg Empire. She had much to do to get her kingdom into shape. When it came to medicine, Austria was about 200 years behind its European neighbors. The Empress acted quickly, recruiting the best medical experts she could find, and Sweeten was one of the most important people she brought on board. By May 1745, Sweeten moved his family to Vienna and began to set the stage for world-class medical training in Austria. Sweeten totally reorganized medicine at the University of Vienna, adding a botanical garden and a chemical laboratory, each headed by its own professor. Sweeten exchanged letters with Linnaeus on botanical matters for over a decade. He named his youngest daughter, Maria, after the empress who was also her godmother. The genus of mahogany, Sweetenia, was named after Sweeten. On this day in 1888, the first organizational meeting of the Rochester Parks Commission was held in Rochester, New York. They decided to invite the great American landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted to design a park system for the city. In fact, Rochester was the last municipal park designed by Olmsted. Charles Sprague Sargent, the first director of Harvard's Arnold Arboretum, called Rochester a city in a forest. Trees have been a vital part of Rochester since the city's founding. It was essentially an impenetrable forest when the first settlers arrived. Rochester's Plank Road is now paved, and it's a nod to the road's original construction. On this day in 1901, the Fruit and Vegetable Committee reviewed 16 stalks of radish in Drill Hall as part of the Royal Horticultural Society's trial of salad plants at Chiswick. All of the radish were sown in a cold frame on March 7th, 1901, except on cold nights. The lights were not put on the frames. The varieties included Crusin's Oblong Black from Masters, Scarlet Queen from Bar, as well as the turnip-shaped Early Extra Scarlet from Veatch. It said it was ready to use April 26th. The roots were scarlet, the foliage very short, crisp and of excellent flavor, one of the best and the earliest. On this day in 1936, Henry Teuscher broke ground for the Montreal Botanical Garden. Teuscher had been appointed superintendent and chief horticulturist of the future Montreal Botanical Garden. A visionary, Teuscher began dreaming of an ideal botanical garden. By fall, Teuscher had hired 2,000 unemployed men through Quebec's Unemployment Assistance Program to get building underway. World War II brought challenges for Teuscher outside of the garden. A German, he was accused of being a spy for the Nazis. Although he was declared innocent, the accusations took a toll. In 1956, Teuscher was there to see the opening of his greenhouses, the realization of his dream for the garden. He died in 1984. Since 1999, the Henry Teuscher Award has been given to a person whose work has contributed in a meaningful way to the advancement of horticulture in Quebec. The 2018 winner was horticulturist and trained biologist Andre Poliquin, an enthusiastic communicator about clematis, roses, and orchids for close to 40 years. 
On this day in 2015, Bartram's Garden in Philadelphia was designated a horticultural landmark. The award was first presented to Monticello, home of President Thomas Jefferson. Other recipients include Longwood Gardens, the Missouri Botanical Garden, the New York Botanical Garden, Arnold Arboretum, and the Fairchild Botanical Garden. Now, you might be asking, how were Bartram's gardens preserved? Well, that job fell to Andrew McCullough Eastwick, an engineer and inventor of the steam shovel. He made sure the historic garden was kept intact. Eastwick had banked a personal mint after building railroads for Tsar Nicholas I of Russia. In 1850, he bought the 46-acre Bartram estate from Bartram's granddaughter, Anne Bartram Carr. Unlike the fate of many old homes, Eastwick decided not to tear down the existing Bartram house. Instead, he kept it as a memorial. He vowed not to harm one bush planted by the Bartrams. In unearthed words, here's a wonderful quote from Rabindranath Tagore, born on this day in 1861. Trees are the earth's endless effort to speak to the listening heaven. Today's book recommendation is Life in the Garden by Penelope Lively. Lively picks up her key themes of time and memory and her lifelong passions for art, literature, and gardening in this philosophical and poetic memoir. And here's a quote attributed to Lively. To garden is to elide past, present, and future. It is a defiance of time. For today's garden chore, trial something this year. Experiment with a few new varieties. Notice the differences. If you've ever seen the movie Runaway Bride with Julia Roberts, there's a scene where she, playing Maggie, and Richard Gere, playing Ike, are arguing about eggs. Throughout the movie, Ike has been interviewing Maggie's former fiancés, and he asked each of them how Maggie liked her eggs cooked. Maggie never formulated her own opinion. She just ordered whatever her fiancé ordered. Take basil. How can you know if you prefer mammoth or purple ruffles until you've grown or cooked both? Whatever plants you think you love, the odds are good you'll love a variation of it even more. So go trial something. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. On this day in 1855, Charles Darwin wrote to William Darwin Fox. He said, I'm rather low today about all my experiments. Everything has been going wrong. The fish at the zoological gardens after eating seeds would spit them all out again. Seeds will sink in salt water. All nature is perverse and will not do as I wish it. And just at present, I wish I had the old barnacles to work at and nothing new. It was a bad day. 23 years later, in 1878, on this very day, he wrote to Thomas Henry Farr, first baron. At present, I care for nothing in this wide world except the biology of seedling plants. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember... For a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced weekdays in lovely Maple Grove, Minnesota. You can find complete show notes over at thedailygardener.org. And be sure to share the show with your garden friends. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, and of course, Facebook. While you're over at Facebook, don't forget to join The Daily Gardener community. Just search for these three words, Daily Gardener Community. The group will pop right up and then request to join. Finally, I want to thank my team at Podfly Productions, where my fabulous editor is Eric Begay. Have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.